Hey guys! So today's video is going to be my October favorites. I'm going to be showing you art supplies and other things that I have been enjoying throughout the month of October. Kind of changing this to artists' favorites rather than just art supplies because I've been asked so often to include other things. So I guess we will just hop right into it. I hope the lighting is a bit better in this video. I have my uh, softbox like right up on me so you can <laughs> see pretty much everything. So hopefully that works a bit better than the past two videos have been. A lot of these products you will have seen me use throughout the month of October. I kind of like to include in my favorites products that I've actually been using because um, I usually get a lot of questions about things I use in my videos, so I think it's kind of appropriate to talk a little bit more in depth in about them in this type of video. So you'll see like the Peerless watercolors I used, um, brush pens that I've used, Copics that I used, stuff that I talked about in previous videos. So I guess I will just get started with the art supplies first and then move on to everything else. Alright, so I guess I'll start off with the largest of the art supplies that I have, which is um, Arch's watercolor paper. This is the watercolor paper that I used to paint my Over the Garden Wall illustration. That was my last video. Um, Arch's is really the only watercolor paper that I will paint on. Um, it's actually, besides the Moleskin watercolor sketchbook that I have, this is the only watercolor paper I've ever painted on at all. <laughs> so I just really like it. You can use it for obviously watercolor, gouache, ink, acrylics, um, you can do printmaking on it. It's just really good quality. This is the um, 30 GSM 140 pound paper um, and it's cold pressed and I definitely like cold pressed paper more than hot pressed paper, but I cut this page a bit. But um, I just really like the texture and how thick this paper is and it's thick but I can still use my light box through it to trace an illustration onto it. Um, I just really like the quality of the paper and the texture. I don't know if I can get this zoomed in to see the texture, but I just feel like it really sort of enhances the way a drawing looks because you can see kind of the grainy texture of the paper even after you've painted and it holds paint really well and it doesn't bleed through because I used a lot of um, paint on this and it didn't bleed through at all, which is pretty awesome. And it stayed pretty flat when you tape it down, so yeah. Arches is pretty expensive. I would say, I think that these sell, this is just like a, like the flat pad of Arches and it's probably like $15. I know that they sell for about, like this is a nine by 12 and I think it's $12 on Blick, but I'm sure it's probably more on Amazon because Blick has pretty good discounts, but um, yeah, it's good quality watercolor paper that I really like a lot. All right, so the next product I'm going to talk about is something else I used in my Over the Garden Wall illustration and said that I would talk about in my October favorites, and that is Nicholson's Peerless Transparent Watercolors. These are in the dry sheet format. They also come in bottled liquid watercolor, but I have not used that. I've only used these ones. Um, this is the Complete Color Edition book. I also have the bonus pack that has additional colors. Um, these are really good. I wasn't sure about them when I bought them. That's why, like I said, I bought them, I bought them months and months ago and never used them because I was kind of iffy about them. But once I started using them, this is pretty much all I'll use from now on because I love them so much. I didn't really touch this main book in my illustration video. If you want to check that video, um, I'll leave a link down below so you can see me actually working with them in a video. Um, but there's just, this book has uh, 15 colors and they're really basic colors like browns and reds and yellows and colors that you can use to mix with other colors to make <laughs> other colors. Um, but it says the name of all the colors on the reverse side. And they're on like this kind of special kind of paper. It's kind of, it sort of feels like fabric but um, you can take these out, the colors do come out, and you can cut them down to size if you wanted to put them in like a little travel book or something. I think I'm gonna do that because I have some trips that are coming up really soon, and I think that these would be really good for traveling because they are like super mess-free, which I really like. Um, as I said, I also have the small set. This is an additional 40 colors, and they all say the color name um, on the back get that to zoom in but yeah they say the color name on the back of each one of them so because some of them are you can, it's kind of hard to tell what color they are because some of them are super dark but um, the names of the colors are all listed on the backs of them but these are really nice I was really surprised that I ended up liking them as much as I did because they are so unusual but yeah if you're looking for a 
type of watercolor that's not messy <laughs> I would highly recommend these because you can literally ju literally just take a water brush and pull the color up and as I said you can see me using them in my over the garden wall illustration from last week if you want to check that out so yeah peerless watercolors they're really surprisingly nice <laughs> all right so I just grabbed this so I guess I'll talk about this and this this is not what I'm talking about this is but there's a set that this comes with a tiny water brush that looks like this but I can't find it I'm horrible. I looked all over the place for it, but I can't find it. But it's about the same height as this little bottle. But this is the Kuretake Water Brush Petite Set. I got this from jetpens.com. Um, good for travel. This little container holds 30 milliliters of water. I've had water in here for like two years. <laughs> it's never spilled out. So I just keep using it until it's gone. But it's just a little watercolor set that you can carry some water in and it will not spill. I've carried this in my purse, on planes, and all kinds of stuff and it will not spill and the brush that it comes with, it kind of like reverses so the um, brush goes inside so it's easily portable. But yeah, this is a nice little set if you want to go watercolor painting outside. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is this. This is another brush style pen. This is the Pentel Aquash Watercolor Brush Pen in Light Black. I used this a lot in my Inktober um, quick sketch video. It's it's basically a black inking pen. It's very, very, very similar to this. They're actually almost identical, but this one comes with um, a light black ink in it. I'll whip out my trusty little notebook. Do a little demo. Oh, but yeah, it's just it's a brush pen basically. But I just really liked the quality of the ink and how easily it flows out of the brush and you just kind of give it a little squeeze if you want there to be a bit more pigment rather than just a little bit light black. It is light black so it's not like a super intense deep black it's more of like a dark gray and I kind of like that so if you're looking for a good quality brush pen where's my Lego? There it is. <laughs> um, I would think about check checking this out. I got this from jetpens.com again. I know that they do sell these at some Michaels. The Michaels store by my house does sell these. So yeah, I think this was 10 bucks, so it's not bad. And they come with ink refills, or you can get ink refills that will just, because this bottom part screws off, so um, you can just replace that if you run out of ink, or I think you might be able to refill it on your own, but don't quote me on that, so yeah. So I would, thought I would talk about my favorite Copic colors of the month. I, as you guys know, I did not color anything with Copics in the past month. I did do, as I said, my Inktober video and I used these. So these are definitely my favorite colors, even though they're technically not really colors of October, but these are the toner grays, um, just the Copic toner grays. Um, I like these, if I can get it to focus, no, there we go. Um, I like these a lot more than the cool grays because they're not as blue as the cool grays are. They're more just like, a, they're super neutral. They're kind of like how, um, well, they're more blue because <laughs> I know that there is a neutral gray as well. They're more blue than the neutral gray, but they're not as blue as the cool gray, if that makes any sense. Um, I think that the toner grays would be a good set to, um, start out with because I get asked a lot what Copic colors people should start out with and I always say grays even though technically they're not colors but I started out when I started buying markers in the first place when I was buying Prismacolors I bought a set of grays first to test them out to see if I liked them before I like dove into buying all the colors but any of the gray sets I think would be good starter like a starter set for an artist who wants to test out Copic so yay so I had to raise up my camera a little bit for the next thing I'm going to show you, and this is actually the thing I'm most excited to show you guys. I've had this for a while, and I've been messing around with it for a couple months, and I've decided to include it in a favorites. Um, this is Armature 9. Now Armature 9 is, as you can see, a drawing mannequin. Um, it is 3D printed. Um, you can only buy it from the Armature 9 website, which I will link below. Um, I used to have one of those like wood drawing mannequins that I used. I will never ever use anything but this ever again. This, Sorry, I had to pull my camera out once again because this thing is a bit bigger than I realized it was, so trying to keep it all in frame. But yeah, as I said, this is a drawing armature. It's fully posable. Like, it's nuts how posable this thing is. Like, you can turn the arms and it has like replaceable parts. 
and the legs actually move like humans legs actually do it does come apart but as i said it's 3d printed so if something does pop off it just goes right back on um but yeah it's like the best drawing armature i have ever used um the thing i like most about it is how flexible the neck is because anybody who's used one of those wooden drawing armatures before or mannequins knows that the neck is just never it doesn't do what a human neck actually does like you could never do that with a wooden drawing armature i keep saying armature and i mean mannequin i have black ink all over my hand but yeah i just this thing is awesome and the legs you can move the, like nobody's leg actually does that but you know so you can get a whole bunch of really unique poses that you could never do with a regular armature like you could never do that and it sits so nicely and this thing sitting in the back is the black stand that you can also buy with it armature 9 is a little bit expensive um i think just the armature by itself is 90 dollars, which is a bit expensive i know but and with the drawing or not the drawing this stand it is 110 dollars. um they also do other types of armatures i know that they have a horse that goes with this so like the human can ride the horse which is pretty cool and there's some type of monster and then there's a bunch of like accessories that you can buy that go with this and you can buy like replacement parts and all kinds of stuff in case something does get broken but yeah if you are looking for a really nice drawing armature for like reference drawing i would highly recommend armature 9. Uh, i use this all the time when i'm working now just because of how flexible and how easy it is to use so yeah, this is definitely my favorite thing that I've been using through October and months before that because it took me a long time to decide to talk about this in a video. And I don't know why because I really like it. But yeah, you should definitely check this out if you're looking for a really good quality armature. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about non-art related things. And I forgot to mention, if you can hear my chair squeaking in the background, it's a chair. <laughs> I got a new computer chair a couple days ago and it's like... The leather is still kind of squeaky because it's not broken in yet so that's what that annoying squeaky noise in the background is so i guess i'll start with let's go with the movie and i bet you guys can guess what it's going to be <laughs> um i talked about this already many times but go watch over the garden wall it's the best <laughs> um it's very like fall it's fall because it can it debuted in um november of last year so it's very like i'm sorry if you can see that's my soft box reflected in that and it's impossible to not there we go um yeah it's just a very fall kind of halloween spooky kind of animation but this is the disc set um i bought this on amazon i think it's like nine dollars it's super cheap for the full series and there's i think it's 10 episodes but they're 15 minutes each but yeah it's just really charming and cute and if you're looking for something fun that's really unique and creative i would definitely recommend it checking out over the garden while I heard that it's on Hulu and I believe it is on Amazon Prime to watch as well so definitely check it out it's really cute and I love it a lot so I guess I will talk about my favorite music of the month and it's been sitting here and it's huge um, this is the journey soundtrack from the ps3 game journey which is one of my favorite games of all time I play it a lot like I play it like at least once a week because it's a short game so but this is one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time i was super excited to see that i could buy it on vinyl because i have a record player that i'm super into right now and i bought this from im8bit.com i also have it on cd as well and a digital copy because i have a problem but the vinyls are really beautiful i was super excited to be able to get this little light collector set because it is limited edition but I would highly recommend checking out the Journey soundtrack. It's just similar to the music I talked about last month. It is all instrumental. It's just really ethereal and really moving. And I find that really easy to draw to. So this is a really good soundtrack to draw to. Um, but yeah, if you haven't heard the soundtrack, I would definitely try and track it down on like YouTube. I'm sure it's on YouTube or somewhere else or purchase it if you like it. Definitely purchase it if you like it. That's good. Support the company. But yeah, this has been my favorite music of the month. I've listened to this almost every day, actually every day for the past like four weeks and it's been nuts. But yeah, I love this soundtrack a lot. All right. So this is my last thing for my October favorites. And anybody who knows me is not surprised at all by the inclusion of this. This is the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Illustrated Edition that came out I think it was the 10th of October. 
I pre-ordered this in like January. <laughs> Because you guys know that I'm really big into Harry Potter and I have this huge Harry Potter book collection, which I've never shown you guys, and I think that I should because it's insane. But this is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, but it is fully illustrated. And when I say fully illustrated, I mean it is fully illustrated. Every single page has some form of artwork on it. Like these, it's so beautiful. It's illustrated by Jim K. Yeah, I thought that's who it was. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's the same book, but every page has illustration work on it. And the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. Um, I marked some of my favorites to show you guys. Look at Diagon Alley. And the best part is it continues on to the next pages. And it's so great. Uh, but I was super excited to get this. I had been waiting and waiting for it. Like these illustrations are beautiful. It makes reading the book such an interesting experience because it has like illustrations splashed throughout like it's and it's not just on white paper that I don't know if you can tell on camera but the paper has like a parchment texture behind it and like ink splatters and stuff on it and I just love that little touch it's so it's just so cool and this is my favorite thing ever I was so excited to have this and I've read it like three times already <laughs> even though I've read this book like a billion times but yeah I would definitely recommend, if you're a Harry Potter fan, definitely grab this. It's just, like, this is an art book. It's a story, but also an art book inside of it. And it's just, it's so nice. I love it. I hope that they do the rest of the books in this style. But yeah, um, I would definitely recommend grabbing the Harry Potter Illustrated Edition. It is amazing and wonderful, and definitely my favorite book for October. But look how nice it is. Oh my god. All right, so I guess that concludes my October favorites. I feel like this video is like a thousand years long, but that's fine. Um, as usual, I will have links to anything that I talked about down in the video description below, so you can go check that out if you wanna know like where I got something or how much something costs that I bought or where I bought something from. It'll all be down there for you guys as usual. Um, what were your October favorites? I really do like hearing what everybody else has been using because it gives me ideas of things that I could try out myself. And I, I've had recommendations from past videos and I have gone out and purchased products because <laughs> of recommendations from you guys. And I like hearing about what everybody else is using. So let me know about that. Um, give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys shortly for the next video. Bye.